topic, but let's talk about emotions. When are when are emotions good? Somebody tell me when are when are emotions good? Give me an example. Let's just free talk right now. What do you mean? <clears throat> Is there ever a time that being emotional is good? When they cause action. When it causes action? Yes. When it causes okay. you to take action, it could even be fear can cause you to take, take action, but it's better if it can be, um, you know, a, a positive emotion, making you, you know, <laughs> having a goal and, and, and being emotionally tied to that goal and, it becomes more of a thing of the heart. The heart will lead the mind. Okay. I'm following you. I, I like it. I like it. Anybody else have any responses about uh, what? when is being emotional good? When is being emotional good? So in a personal development kind of way, is that what you mean, Mag? I mean, uh, Greg, when it, when it drives you. To well, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I remember getting a job several years ago and, um, and the big driver, and of course, you know, it was a sales job and results are the final judge in sales. So I had a fear of, of, uh, not being successful. And that fear drove me for the first six months. Then I, then I got um, pretty good at it. And, you know, I got a lot better at it. I wouldn't say I got pretty good, but I got better at it. And then the emotion of the satisfaction uh, of attaining goals, uh, that became the driver, which is a lot better, but either one will work. Yeah. Yeah. Uh why we got to wait for the doctor to tell us that we're pre-diabetic before we have enough emotional momentum to put the Twinkie down. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Uh, Good example. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and I've, I've seen a lot of people in that situation and uh, man, I don't know why this, I hope you guys don't hear this. My phone is ringing in the background and I can't figure out how to turn it off <laughs> on my computer. <laughs> there it is. There we go. There you go. I don't have any idea who it is. Things happen on Zoom. There we go. <laughs> uh, what, what was I saying, guys, before I got distracted? <laughs> I why, got you distracted. Put, why do you have to get emotional to put the Twinkie down? Uh, pre-diabetic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, yeah you, why, why you got to be told you're pre-diabetic? Because, you know, you're, uh, you know, before you make a change. That's the point. Yeah. You know, we let our lives deteriorate sometimes to a point before we, you know, we get back into a corner. Some of us have that personality too, a little bit where we get back into a corner and we're, uh, you know, we're ready to, we're ready to fight now. Finally, you know, yeah. Emotions can be good in those, in those ways. Anybody else have another, uh, another way that emotions might be good. What about love? Love. It's good. Yeah love that's a, it's good to be emotional with in your love for your your partner or your lover you know oh when you're making love oh when you make yeah when you're making love mag says you know it's good to be emotional when you're making he's the, he's the emotional love maker <laughs> <laughs> i don't know for me i'm just trying to get my freak on okay <laughs> well, welcome all, to the all good emotions come from love all bad emotions come from fear. Oh, oh wow, that's great, man. That's that's great. Deep. Yeah, I 100% I agree with that. Okay, so let me ask you this question here. And you guys tell me. Oops. Anybody have an answer for this question? What place does emotions have in business? None. I, I think it plays a big part in business. Okay. 
both of you tell me why you say what you do. Because <laughs> you're both on the opposite sides of the fence here. One says no. Why do you think no, Mag? Well, here's the thing. You got to have um, emotional intelligence on business, right? We're talking about a different type of emotion now. So that's why I think it plays a different game. Uh, <clears throat> so emotional intelligence. So for IQ, so it, like being smart versus emotional intelligence or EQ, which is, which is what? Somebody tell me what's emotional, what's emotional intelligence? What's EQ? Both, both help. Both help. I, IQ helps and emotional intelligence helps. Yeah. Where do you think most of us are lacking? This is mindset training, really, if you want to get down to it. I, I didn't have this plan today. I wanted to handle the addiction, but I kind of got off on this. One. We emotionally, uh, we, we, we lack in EQ, for sure. Are, are most of us just not smart enough yet? No, we are smart. I see. <laughs> you know, a couple of you said, I'm not, I, I, gee, still, boss, I, I'm not I'm sure. Learning. I'm just, I'm just still learning. Hey, hey, I'm still learning. So it's not that I'm dumb. It's just, I, that I think with me to get that education. I understand. I understand, Philip. I, I think that we, fine. we know. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm no, sorry. go, go for it. Didn't Greg. mean to talk over you. Uh, I think, uh, like, if you start out a new job and, and you have no experience in that field, you get a you get some training. Hopefully, you get some training. But the way you really learn it is by doing it. Right. And and I think uh, you know you. I think a lot of us, and I'm in this group. I'm wanting to aim, 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 and then shoot. But, you know, there's some advantage to doing some aiming, but if you're constantly aiming and not shooting, you're not going to get anything. And I, I, th I think I know a lot more about this business uh, on a beginning level than uh, most jobs I ever started new where I had to just start doing it. And what, what happens when you start doing it is you do make some mistakes and we have a fear. That's where the emotion can work against us. We have a fear of looking foolish. We have a fear of being rejected. Uh, and, and that holds us back. But I, I think the answer for most of us, and you know, there could be some exceptions. I think most of us, the guys I know that are on here a, a lot, I, I think we know a heck of a lot just from, from being exposed to it. But we're, we're gonna learn exponentially more by doing it. Yeah. Yeah, any, any, uh, any comments on that? That was good teaching. It was good teaching, good training there. Well, I, I think Greg make a, a great point. Why, let me ask you a question. Why, if you got a family and they, they give you a job, but you don't know how to do the job, but you go in the job and you do it, even though you don't know how to do it, you learn it, right? You, yeah. you go out there and do it. You don't learn it, you just go and do it. So why you can't yeah. do it when, when the business? I think that's the way it's supposed to work. Because... I'm going to answer that question and tell me if I'm right or wrong, because at the job, we have the woman's or the spouse's support. Like you better go get that job. You better keep that job. You better have that job. When I get home from my job or my job's going to be getting you out. Okay. Well, some people can be single. They'd be by themselves and they go okay. get a job. They say, I never did it before. I say, well, how did you, yep. how did you learn to do that? I just started doing it. I think also, with the job, we are we are sheep as humans as good metaphor, right out of the right out of the good book. Good metaphor. We like to follow. We I like it when a boss tells me what to do. When I know what to oh, do. Yeah. I'm gonna be there X amount of time. I'm gonna get X amount of dollars. I I gotta do X amount of bullshit, and that's it. 
And you got security. <laughs> and if I don't, this guy yells at me, rides my case. But if I tow the line just close enough, I get by. And that's how most people have been trained to think from birth. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who also and, and thinks there's that immediate, way? There's immediate feedback from a boss. If you're not doing what you're supposed to do, we can rationalize what we don't do. Yeah. Well, I, th I think Justin is right there as far as being uh, trained that way since birth. But there's also that that's why we need accountability. Because uh, yep. Justin is right that you need a boss. Boss is always writing you to get things done. And when it's not done, well, then you got to answer to me. But accountability or having an accountability partner, I think, helps a lot of people. It would probably it would help me. Uh, hey, why didn't you get that done? What's what's the deal? You know, and then try to get through that or whatever. Yeah. 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 So is that an IQ problem? Or is that an EQ problem? <laughs> EQ. Yeah, I don't think that's an IQ problem Love for them. most of us. Uh, uh, <laughs> gee, gee, boss. Uh, uh, can you tell me what to do next? <laughs> I don't think most of us are in that category when it comes to real estate. I think we're sharp enough to know how to... Most of you, are, most of you have a master's degree in this shit already. <laughs> I'm gonna start giving out master's degrees and PhDs. Can you give out? What is that? What can is you that uh, post MBA. high school diploma? Is that what that was, Ed? Post high school yeah. diploma? Yeah, PhD, <laughs> a public high school diploma. Public high school. Yeah. What about what about MBA? Multiple bank accounts. <laughs> yeah. I have I have that too. Uh huh. I've got a BS. I've got a BS. That's for sure. You know? <laughs> Yeah, um, I think it's not an IQ problem. It's a, an emotional quotient. It's an emotional. I think the people that are stuck in that rut, you can't blame them. If that's you, I don't blame you. If you're one of those people who's just not getting it done, because honestly, that accountability isn't there. I have thought of ways to get accountability integrated into this group, how to get us to open up and, and really share and care and and keep each other really accountable on Wednesday night. It's hard to get you guys to do that. And I think the reason why is, is because, well, one, it's, it's not a natural feeling, I think, to begin with. But two, because I don't really hold any leverage on you like a boss would. See? Yeah. A boss holds that leverage. I have no leverage. I'm just another, I'm just, no, I'm just another voice that you listen to. And so what it makes me think of is, uh, is my kids, my kids, that's what they need. They need, they need dad. They need mom <laughs> to be the fence, to be the boundary to be the reminder, hey, yeah. your schedule today. Your, did you did you go to the dentist today? Okay, you're driving now, but did you make it there? Okay, I know you left, but did you, oh, you did? Okay, you got there. Okay, you did. What did he say? Okay, that's what mommy and daddy do, <laughs> right? But when when we got 18, like they stopped doing that maybe a little bit, and we were off on our own. But we had never been trained to do all that for ourselves, really, truly, most of us. I wasn't. It's taken me a long time to develop my EQ to where now I parent myself. I tell myself, hey, you know, go to the dentist today. Go, you know, make sure, you know, you take the right paperwork. Make sure this happens. Make sure you do that. Make sure you make your calls. Make sure you follow up with this person. Write that down. See, I still need that accountability. But now my accountability is at Trello board. Yes. It's that, it's that to-do list. It's that I, I've, I've learned to, to shift the responsibility of mom and dad off on that Trello board. Does that make sense? That guys? Trello board to me is just so confusing. Just well, right. You got to get you something that's not, you know, find you one like, like Evernote or something that, that you like, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just get a whiteboard. Justin. Just get or, a whiteboard. And write or that like, or one of them calendar books, man. I know a dude that still uses one of those 
uh, hardbound calendar books and you open it up and it's yeah. all pencil written, pen written, and there's shit notes everywhere and everything. But, but he knows where shit's at. Hey, if that works, go for it. He bought me one. He was like, Hey, you got to use one of these. It's the best, <laughs> it's the best thing since sliced bread. And I was like, bullshit, man, I got an app. <laughs> you know? Hey, hey, Justin. Yeah. Justin. Greg. Let me share my to-do list with you today. Okay. And, and it, this is going to show you my problem. So this is <laughs> what, what do you call it? This is uh, being transparent. <laughs> Okay, first thing on my my list is paper, which means I've got some paperwork I need to do. I've actually yep. done that already. Then I've got a I've got uh, I've got a, a thing down here about land that teaches you about buying and selling land. I wanted to go look at that that YouTube thing. So I, I've actually scheduled that. Pay property taxes. Practice for Sunday, which I I got to do some music on Sunday. Exercise. Red drink and supplements. I, I do like a health drink and I haven't done that yet. I gotta call a guy about gutters. I gotta I gotta show a guy uh, uh, some paint repair it needs to be done on Holy my house. Shit. I got a I got a linky leaky sink. Okay. That 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 just happened the last two days. I gotta call Uncle John. <laughs> Because uh, I got to tell Uncle John about my my mother who's been in the hospital. That's ten items. W what do you notice about that list? What what stands out about it? I can tell you, but I'm not too sure you're gonna like it. <laughs> tell me, tell me Philip, I'm, if, I'm 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 being vulnerable. Go ahead and tell me. You, you want to make me feel I good or tell you the truth, right? <laughs> I didn't hear anything about real estate in there. That's, That's right. the whole point. That's the whole point. See, I'm busy. I got a lot of stuff to do, but that's not a good excuse. Question. Here, here's the question. Are you, yeah. are you being busy or are you being productive? I, I'm being busy. Okay. So, so Justin's question was, what's the problem? I'm telling you my problem. Now, the other thing, I, I think, part of my problem is the emotion. Um, I don't like to, I don't like to look or sound foolish. And I, I think there's a high probability of me getting on the phone and doing that. Uh, so that's a negative emotion. That's it's. And then I think I've got some uh, analysis paralysis. I got to know more, 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 more before I do this. And I think I know enough actually. Uh, and, and I, th I think it, it you know, even in physics, there's there's the concept of inertia. It's hard to get an object that's not in motion to be in motion. But I can tell you from experience, when I get in motion on a certain in a certain direction and pick up momentum, that's almost easy. And I think that's what I need to do is get to the momentum level where, you know, it's just, in fact, when I woke up this morning, one of the first thoughts on my mind is I need to quit making excuses and just do it. Yep. Just do it. Yeah. I have rules on my Trello board. And one of those rules is, is I don't do more than six things in a day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Now, I know that sounds uh, nutty, but I put some limits on it because my day was full of all kinds of shit. Mow the grass and weed eat, and then I need to bug spray something, and then I need to climb on the roof and clean the gutter on that section of the roof, and, you know, and then I need to go get a haircut, and then I need to swing by the bank, and then I need to pick up a kid and take him to this place and then grab the other kid and get some lunch and then swing home and check on the wife. And then, you know, I can't do anything while I'm home because I'm busy and with her. And then, you know, it's just on and on and on. And that's what my Trello board looked like. I had the same issue, same issue. I made a rule that no more than six items land on that Trello board. And those six items must support my plan 
my goal, which is also right next to it on my Trello board, my, my, my goal. If these six items don't, that's add, the key. If these six items don't support this goal, they don't belong on this page. You know, now that's I, the key. If you got to call uncle John, cause mama's sick, that's an emergency. Family comes first family emergencies and stuff. Trump business. Everybody should recognize that. Okay. There are things outside of your control that you must do. I get that. But on a day-to-day -day basis, most of us aren't living the life of emergencies. So most of us just have shit to do. So I yep. will, I will, I will make, I, I'm very, very particular about what goes on that Trello board and see at two o'clock at night when I'm up there on the couch in my under jammies and I'm looking at the, at the Trello board, what am I doing? I'm rewriting my goal. I'm, I'm planning my week. I'm deleting things that don't support my goal. I'm changing them. I'm, I'm make, I'm refining it. See, so I become a very focused individual. So, so now I only have six things on my list to do today, but every one of them will push the needle further. Just a little bit at least. So I don't know if that helps but that's what I did. And it's one thing to have, because it's one thing to have a to-do list. It's one thing to have a task list, but is it, it's another question. Do the tasks on the list support your goal? You know, it, it, and that's it, also it, called priority prioritizing. Yeah. Yeah. In that, a word. It, for something to be a number one priority, it has to be, first of all, important, and your goals are important. And the other thing is it needs to be, at least in your mind, urgent. The yeah. combination of those two uh, should should get action. Right. So we're, we're, I, you're exactly right. My list is too long. And I knew I probably wouldn't get all 10 done today. But what I really need to do is go through that list and put two of those lists down per day for a five-day week. Unless they have to be done right now. And then put my high priority things that help me reach the goal on that day. And then yeah. I'm at six or less. Easy. Yeah. 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 If here's what I tell my son. Um, and I'm not, I'm not Tony Robbins or anything, but and I'm not Zig Ziglar or some kind of a huge great parent by any means. But I tell, I tell my kid this, you know, if you don't have a plan, if you don't come up with a plan, if you don't come up with your own goals, your own schedule your own life if you don't invent it it will be invented for you and chances yeah. are chances are you won't like what's invented for you so you can sit back and think all oh, this is going to go to plan oh it will mm -hmm. but just not yours ouch that's what i tell my kid though and you know what? It bounces off his head like his brain produces a chemical that blocks out the sound of my voice. Yeah, all teenagers. That's because. You'll remember someday. Yeah, uh, hopefully, hopefully, that's because he has this. Uh, you know, he has this IQ thing, but he's really low on this this EQ thing. Most of us are pretty sharp people like we kind of get this iq thing we, we we know how it works but we like this emotional ability to pull it off to it's the discipline the consistency that's what we call it it's like oh well i like the consistency or i like the discipline or i like the no really really maybe it's emotional intelligence mm -hmm maybe you just need to kind of reorganize and restructure your life and your goals and recommit to some things nothing will change until you do 
And see, I realized that nothing would change until I do, but I also realized that this goal that I have of getting a deal is a pretty big goal in my mind. Like there's a lot of shit that has to happen before this comes together. Like it all has to work. So it's kind of a big goal in my mind. So I can't focus on this because it's overwhelming, but I can, if I break it down into little daily tasks that push me in that direction, I can still make progress in small little mile markers, you know, and that helps me too. I get overwhelmed feeling when I get all this, you know, these big ideas and I'm trying to accomplish them. If I can break it down into six things a day and I do, if I just successfully do those six things, I'm a success today. Yeah, you are. You didn't make any money today yet, but you're, you're doing the things that lead to the checks. And once they start coming, they'll continue to come. If you keep doing what you're doing today, <laughs> Somewhere in my life that clicked and I started breaking my big goals down into these daily tasks, which is where the Trello board trainings come from today. Like here's my daily to do's and how I break them all down and where this goes every week on this day and the rules of no more than six things. Now, sometimes I break that rule and I'll do seven or eight but I don't like those days. I will complain and bitch about that all day long. My, <laughs> my boss is a total ass. <laughs> Gave me eight things to do today instead of six. Okay. <laughs> I am my own boss. Okay. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> got it. <laughs> so I can say that about myself. Justin. Yeah. Marianne, what's up? That's what I like about Trello too, because I'll put I'll put something down and say, like working on a deal, you know, first you have to do this and that and that. So if if on one of those cards I'll put like for me, I'll put something like um, you know, just email this person. And then and then after I email I accomplish it that day, then I move it to the next day and do the next step, call them back or whatever whatever the situation is. And I think to myself, you know, I, this is what I've told myself before. The Great Wall of China wasn't done all at one time. It was one brick at a time, right? right. So that's, that's like what you're saying. That's, it's so much simpler for my brain, for my mind, and for me to remember, you know, on the Trello board. Like I'll just put down like one step that I need to do that day. And then if, if by chance I don't get it done, then I easily move that card to the next day. And say, oh yeah, I need to get this done. That way, you don't have to remember everything that you have to do that day, or have it written down on paper, or whatever. And what I do is, after after I do it, is that I'll edit that card. You know, I'll erase some of that that's on the card, and instead of um, putting it in the trash or archiving it like it says on Trello, I'll put it like a little dot there. So, you know, I'll erase everything, just put the dot there so the card is there. And so then I can use that card again for whatever I want. But I'm, I'm so, I didn't think I needed Trello first. But now that I'm doing Trello, I feel much more organized. I don't have to worry about remembering everything. You know, I can look and see the whole week at a time, you know, and then rearrange it and plan it or whatever. So I'm, real, I'm really thankful for that and, well, and um what you were saying about the emotions our best deals i think come from um when we're emotional you know uh -huh. when when you care about what the person is saying what the seller is saying like they're having a hardship so when you care about it like you care about us like on wednesday night you care about us i mean you care about us all the time but you were talking about wednesday night so when and you're putting laughter into it, you know, and I'm much rather I learn better from someone like you because of that, you know, because you care and you put laughter into it. It's not like you're straight teaching us this and this and this and this, and you should do it. And if you don't do it, you're not going to get a deal. And you're not, you know, who needs all that? I don't want to learn from someone like that. You know, I learn much better from someone like you who cares about us, who, um, engages with us who answers all our questions who laughs you know so i i think it's wonderful you know and i'd much rather stick with someone like you 
you know, in learning than someone who's like has no emotion at all. They're just teaching that they and they don't care about who they just want to get their sales done or whatever. You yeah. Know? I appreciate you saying that, Mary. Uh, very much. Uh, I, I really do. It means a lot to hear that. And uh, thank you for recognizing that. I do care and I do want you guys to get this stuff. But I realize too that life is a journey. And, you know, for some of us, it clicks in the first week. And some of us, it clicks in the first month. And some of us, it takes six months. And some of us, it takes a couple of years. And some of us, it takes 10 years. You know, um, I, I kind How of. How long did it take you, Justin? You know, it's a good question, Greg. The first time I got started doing this was early in the 2000s. And I was successful accidentally right off the bat. I mean, just accidentally. Didn't have a clue. I mean, I, I was totally out there just swinging, hoping to hit something, and I accidentally did. And <laughs> I, I later tried to duplicate it and struggled greatly. Okay, kind of laid the business down after a little while and didn't, didn't do it anymore for i mean i i did some wholesaling but very little and and i didn't do any uh sandwich lease options i didn't do any fixing flipping i didn't you know i was hurt i was wounded uh i don't know why i can't get back to the success i was having you know like i it, it kind of messed me up greg to, to be successful right off the bat accidentally kind of screwed me up gave me the wrong expectations and then the second time i really decided to lock in on this i was i was working in a bar and I was like, well, you know, I know, I know everything about this stuff. I just, I'm not doing it. And why am I not doing it? Because I'm scared that I'm going to su succeed and screw my life up again. Or I'm scared that what, what's, what's wrong with me? I really had to have my own personal come to Jesus meeting, you know? And funny enough, I did that standing behind a bar at a local restaurant. And uh, I made a commitment and I said, you know, I literally said, I said, you know, Justin, you are never going to get out of here unless you do something. This is your life. So what are you going to do? And the first pop, the first thought that popped in my head was, I don't know. I don't know what to do, but I know what to do, but I don't know what to do. <clears throat> Anybody ever get caught in that cycle? I know what to do, but I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. It's a cop out. Do something. Do anything. Anything. Because right there is the most dangerous place to be. That's what we call complacency. If you look up the definition of the word complacent or complacency, you're comfortable. You're comfortable with your misery. Uh -huh. yeah so i decided i'm never going to get out of this bar and get back to any kind of life that i want unless i do something and, but what do i do i don't know what to do so i made this decision i'm going to be the best damn bartender i can be that's it i it had nothing to do with real estate that was a bartender too yeah so i'm gonna be the best fucking bartender anybody's ever fucking seen in this whole fucking town that's what i said and I and I and I meant it. And about two weeks later, a gentleman walked into the bar. I made him four dirty martinis. He was sloshed <laughs> off his rocker. Because remember, I'm going for the best bartender award. <laughs> he said, "You know, I like you. I want to give you a thousand dollar tip. I want you to come interview for me." Turns out the guy does investment banking. So I went over and I, I interviewed with him. He hired me to work at his investment banking firm. So now I'm no longer a bartender. I'm sitting there doing a little bit of this chump work. I'm not getting paid much. He's not paying me much. In fact, for the first six months, I worked for free. And then after that, he started paying me like 2000 a month. So it was tough for the first six months. I was working the bar in his place. And so... Um, after that, I, after about the first six months, I realized that this entire business is identical to the real estate business that I'm so familiar with, right? And then I'm like, why is it 
that I'm working for this guy now instead of doing it myself. Uh See, I'm emotionally growing through all of this. My emotional quotient is getting bigger and bigger. And so I started working on it. I don't know something. It was just, it was just my time. I just, it just clicked for me. And I was like, you know what? If this guy can do it, the guy that I just made four martinis and he gave me a thousand dollar tip and invited me to work. If this guy can do it on a bigger end, why can't I do it with these houses? Like I used to, I know I can do it. See being around God put me in a position where I was around him. I think so my confidence level could come up out of the damn gutter, you know? And maybe that's the only reason why some of you are here in the room with me. So your confidence level can come up out of the damn gutter enough that you'll just step out on something. Because I promise you, when I stepped out on that, that time, I still didn't know what to do. I don't know. But I started trying to do a coho sale deal. I was like, I'm going to set out to do a coho sale deal because I'm I'm working at this other job. I'm going to do a coho sale. You know what? It happened for me. Boom. It happened in the first month. So here we go. Uh, now I'm, my confidence level's coming back. You see, but it didn't happen for me until I was ready, I guess. You know, that, that, that thing that they say that the, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. You know, mm-hmm. are, are you ready? You know, a lot of us will be like, yeah, I'm ready. Bullshit, you know. <laughs> We're not ready, you know. 